Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren. In today's video, I want to take a look at some of the changes happening to rogues in 7.2 and primarily the changes I would really want to see. This video is going to be my wish list for the patch 7.2, something I hope the devs will take a look at if uh, anybody at all. This video is going to consist of changes I'm hoping the devs do implement or maybe even take a look at for the patch 7.2. This video will basically cover some of the things that I think could be changed with the rogue spec, whether for PvE or PvP, and I'll be sure to mention which one it is every single time I do this. I want to take a look at honor talents, talents, basic abilities and basic playstyle of each spec. I want to make this a fairly short video because I feel like there's not too many things I would want to change, but there are a few things I think a dev should at least look into. So let's get on to it. First of all, I want to start with talents because they're fairly organized and then I want to go into on talents and then I want to talk about the spec itself and I'm going to do outlaw, then assassination, then subtlety. So that's kind of how I'm going to do my list. All right, so when you take a look at the outlaw rogue talents, I don't really have any issues with the first row. The second row, I think hit and run could maybe be buffed because it feels like acrobatic strikes and grappling hook are the best options unless you have the legendary. It'd be kind of cool to have a hit and run and have a reason to run it without the legendary, but that's just me. In the next tree for level 45, I think this is what all rogue specs are kind of working with, where you're working with either deeper strat or vigor. In most cases, you either play in subtlety, assassination, or, or outlaw, and vigor or deeper strat ends up being the better option for the damage increase, be it PvE or PvP. Anticipation, however, has an interesting effect where you can stack up to 10 combo points, but it doesn't offer a DPS increase. In the future, it might help out subtlety in terms of being able to store an intense amount of combo points and be able to spam eviscerate back to back to back to back on the enemy for a massive damage increase, thanks to the artifact weapon changes coming out in the future. But I do think that anticipation could see a buff or maybe even move it somewhere else in the talent bar. Regardless, I do want to say that I think Anticipation should be taken a look at by the devs. I know they buffed it to have 10 common points saved up in general, so it's 5 extra to be saved up, but I do think there could be an element with it where it could have a DPS increase. At level 75, Parlay is still fairly useless. The fact that it replaces a blind is, I think, one of the biggest issues that I have with it. If you're going to be replacing an ability as good as a blind, you would think you would want to replace it with an interesting option. Prey and the Weak and Dirty Tricks are great because they offer you a little bit change of playstyle whether you want energy free CC or CC that makes the enemies take 10% more damage, which both are great options, but Parlay ends up feeling like an offside ability. It's so niche in terms of how you utilize it. You basically would want to utilize it together with your sap, so you Parlay one target and sap the other, but it's just so uniquely niche, it's a little bit awkward. If it replaced blind and then offered ACC a lot like incapacitate or paralysis from monks, then I think parlay would be a viable option, at least for PvP aspects of the game. And I think it would be kind of cool because then you would have a lot more reliable CC here and there, which would put Outlaw a little bit ahead in terms of PvP, which of course would be fun but also very broken, so I do understand if Blizzard does not go with that. I'm just kind of trying to think of some ideas how this ability could be changed. Regardless, I would be cool if Dev were to take a look at this. At level 90, I don't really have any issues with any of the talents, but Alacrity ends up coming out on top for Outlaw, and I'm pretty sure it's one of the better options. I actually think the Assassination and Subtlety have slightly different options. Assassination Talent Pro is actually really interesting because it actually offers a different variety of playstyle, but with Outlaw, it ends up being which one of these is the better option. Cannibal Barrage is good in terms of Mythic Plus for certain AoE fights where you really need to burn down mobs, but Alacrity ends up taking the best spot for most cases, even though Killing Spree and Cal Barrage did get buffed. It'd be kinda cool if a dev were to take a look at the level 93 just in general. At level 100, I'm hoping to see an addition to Slice and Dice to maybe buff it somehow, mainly because we get in changes in 7.2 with our artifact weapon, and there's one particular change where if you pop Adrenaline Rush, then your next roll the bones will guarantee you, at the very least, two different buffs to be applied. So you'll have a guarantee of two different buffs in order to be able to burst your target with Adrenaline Rush. This does not help Slice and Dice at all. Slice and Dice actually gets to sit out for that effect completely. So it'd be kind of cool for Blizzard to really take a look at Slice and Dice and roll the bones, and find a way to make Slice and Dice an actual competitive option. Because if you're currently PvPing or going through raid mechanics as a rogue and you're choosing to play Outlaw, then Slice Nice definitely falls way too far behind. It is nice and consistent, but the damage output is so low and so niche, it is just not good enough right now. And I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. So I'm hoping a dev really does take a look into it. 
We have the honor talents and the only thing I could say for the honor talents in the second row is hardness. Does anybody use it? I'm not sure. That's that's all I can say is I'm not sure if anybody uses it. I could see maybe specific situations, but because they're so specific, it just seems like a niche ability. In our row 3, we have boarding party, and this is what all three row specs are dealing with. They have cut to the chase, which is fairly good. They have maneuverability, which is awesome in specific situations, but plenty of those situations exist. Anybody that slows you, like mages for example, that blink around. But then there's the third option for all three specs. Now, I honestly believe subtlety is the only spec that has the most competitive option, where you have shadow step, but reduce it by 50% if you step to a friendly target. But instead, for other specs, we have boarding party, which I guess is niche, but not as good because you don't end up using it that much it's basically like the uh, movement speed with judgment but it just doesn't seem convenient with the fact that outlaw is just a mobile on its own and then assassination has the worst one and we'll take a look at it in a second but i feel like the the third one the third option for all three specs like the ugly duckling in the middle i feel like if devs could take a look at it maybe find a way to buff it or change it with another spell i'd be cool i just that's just all i can say about it in the fourth row, we have turned tables, and that's the only one that I have an issue with. Both Assassination and Outlaw have turned the tables. I honestly think if the devs were to take a look at customize some niche, all three choices, like what Subtlety has, for example, that'd be awesome. But Outlaw has two good options, Thick as Thieves and On Among Thieves. Assassination has two good options as well, we'll cover them in a second, but then there's turned the tables. After coming out of Estonia, deal 50% increased damage for 6 seconds. Now, the 50% damage increase is awesome, and it's a little bit easier to control than Thick as Thieves because with Thieves you have to have a friendly target. But in BGs and Arenas, you always have somebody to tricks. So that's a guarantee, and you can control it whenever you want to at a 30 second uh, interval. In most cases, when rogues get stunned, it's not to be CC'd, but stunned to get killed. And if you don't have a trinket, in most cases you die. So I don't think it's a good idea to even take turn tables because then you're kind of just trying to bait people to stun you and then hoping you live through it and then you're just gonna turn the tables on the enemy so to say. I just don't like this talent and I think it's just in a weird spot. I'm not really sure how I feel about it and I think if a dev could take a look into it, that'd be great because I don't know anybody that really grabs it unless for duels and duels are broken. If they added the stat template to duels, I'd be a different story. But since you can use other things in duels, turn the tables, I don't even know if there's a point. Then we have Take the Cut, Control as King, and Drink Up My Hardies. Control as King is the best, it is the king in the row, uh, mainly because it's just better than the other alternatives. Drink Up My Hardies is Crimson Vile, but it's just not quite as powerful enough to bring in. Like, if it was somehow more powerful than Warlock Healthstone, I'd be awesome. Then I think that'd be something cool to grab in. Maybe if it was some vial that was refilled on its own instead of having specific charges and you would just give away one charge each. If this was a better talent, then a lot more people would grab it. But currently it's just not that great. It would be cool to have some kind of support role as Outlaw with this heal. But currently it's not available and it's not possible. Just because it's just not that good. I tried it so many times. I tried some kind of a crazy heal build with Iron Stomach. And then Drink Umbi Hardies. And then I had a healing potion. It just does not work. Take Your Cut is also an interesting one. And I can see one use out of it. The 50% haste you get for PvP at least. It's not enough. Because of the PvP stat templates, 50% haste doesn't actually do much for you. And the fact that it lasts 8 seconds, it's just, I don't really know how I feel about it. The only way I could see Take Your Cut work is if, let's say, you're trying to roll the bones over and over and over and you keep getting bad buffs, but you need the energy to generate combo points so you can roll again, then Take Your Cut works. But that's really about it. And that's not a situation for a DPS increase where the haste actually goes to help you. So, I don't know. I feel like if they buff Take the Cut or change it or with some other ability altogether that would be cool but that's just my personal wish list for outlaw in the last row i like all the three options except for cheap tricks is weird i do think it could use a buff some kind of an interesting play style um after coming out of blind the target's chance to miss attacks is increased uh, is increased by 75 percent what if that were for a gouge would that be too strong that would make outlaw really support and really peely against melee but would that be too strong let me know in the comments between the eyes reduces the energy cost of a pistol shot by 100%. What if that had a pistol shot damage increase? That would be interesting. And now I also got another idea. This is just out of the blue. What if there was a talent or an honor talent that allowed out the rogues to basically forego the melee roll and pistol shot a lot of enemies? So instead of like saber slashes, they would have some kind of a change mechanic to pistol shot and have a lot of range damage. They, could, they would still have to go in for a run through for main damage components. So they would kind of have to be like this ranged melee kind of moving in and out in and out uh position in a position case 
But then there's also between the eyes, so you can stun and whatever, or maybe just have the ability to swap places in terms of damage and stuns or whatever. That'll be interesting. I don't know. Maybe that's something devs can, can uh, work up. Um, and that's just one of the ideas that I have. I mean, they did take the idea for people that said loaded dice, so you have a guarantee of two rolls. They literally took it from the community. So it's just something I want to offer. So let me know in the comments if you guys like that kind of idea. Overall, I don't think Outlaw is a terrible spec. I do think it's a fairly built spec, fairly well built. The only way I could compare it is like compared to the old school combat rogues of Warlords, but that's really about as far as I could really do it. I honestly do think that Outlaw Rogue is a fairly solid spec uh, everywhere. In PvP, if uh, True Bearing was able to give you back Cloak of Shadows and Repost and Blind, that would be cool, but it's not something I'm going to hold my hopes on to. But otherwise, I think the spec is fairly well built, it's fairly dynamic, and uh, it feels very exciting playing it, whether it's PvE or PvP. So I gotta say, Blizzard did a pretty good job in constructing the Outlaw Rogue spec. Alright, now on to my currently least favorite spec out of all Rogue specs, because I am a big sucker for Outlaw, and then I love Subtlety, and then the Assassination. Hopefully you guys will forgive me on the helmet of choice. Currently get the ugly helmet on. Actually, let me just put these on so you guys can see the good mogs. Anyway. Assassination Rogue. I honestly do think that a bleed style spec would be awesome. And I know that there's like buffs for internal bleeding, there's a buff to subterfuge, and rupture for the most part deals more damage, but hemorrhage is still currently not a viable build. If there was some kind of a way to buff hemorrhage so you could actually have a straight up bleed spec, that'd be cool. I'm not calling for assassination rogues to become ferals, but it would be cool to have talents in a specific manner where you actually have a dot based playstyle instead of your train the target playstyle where you just try to train the target for as long as possible. I honestly think it would be cool, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, I won't mind if that's not a thing that will come out. I get an anticipation, can't say much about that. Leeching Poison, that would be kind of cool if they buffed it. Because it's a leech effect. I feel like the Soothing Darkness for a 1% heal while in stealth for subtlety is better than leeching poison in my opinion it's just because you can in pvp at least wait out the enemy and just sit there and every single second tick that's a percent of your health back plus with uh crimson fire you can kind of get everything back a little bit leech and poison does give a 12 percent leech from your attacks but even out rogue have better leech on a random roll of buffs out of six buffs you can get up to 25 percent leech with the grand melee which also gives you attack speed so it kind of like combos well together so even out rogue has better leech I wouldn't even think with maybe Master Poisoner, like some alt, uh, like side, the extra uh, secondary poisons, like Crippling Poison, for example, or Leech of Poison, that would be buffed, but like as soon as you take it off, it's just 10%. Master Poisoner, the master of poisons, only 2% increase. So it's like, it makes me feel a little bit weird, you know, when it comes to the actual increases, it just, it just doesn't feel right. It feels like if you're going to be the master of poisons, your poisons should be buffed. But that's just my some of my thoughts, some of my opinions. I do think Glitcher Poison could probably see a buff without being overpowered, but that's just me. Then we have, for the most part, a fairly solid choices of talents everywhere. Even Exsanguinate is still viable in specific builds, although if Bleed build were more prevalent, then I think it would be better. But I honestly do think the talents are pretty good in general. Of course, it's going to be the meta that will pick the best talents, but at one point we did use Exsanguinate, so you never know. The auto talents are a bit different story. We do have the third row mobility intent to kill, which is just oh garbage in my opinion. Shadow step cooldown is reduced by 66%, which is a lot, when used on a target marked by a vendetta. So once every minute and a half, you can use shadow step back to back on a vendetta target at a heavily reduced cooldown reduction for it. But if this was an effect of let's say with vendetta, when vendetta is up, your shadow step cooldown is reduced. I think that'd be awesome. Because in arenas you could get around the place all, all over the place. You could shadow step kick a healer, shadow step stun a healer. There would be a lot more control when you got Vendetta available. But this basically makes it so you can shadow step back to back to back against the enemy if you do have Vendetta. I honestly can't think of anybody who would be in that bad of a situation where they actually have to shadow step back to back to back just to chase down the guy. Cut to the chase and maneuverability honestly do accomplish those goals already. Then we have again, fourth row, turn the tables versus unfair advantage. Unfair advantage is just an unfair option. It is the best option in tree. I turn the tables is just same old, same old, especially for assassination. Like you have to have the bleeds and the dots rolling on an enemy, get stunned and then burst. Cause there's just so much setup. Just turn the tables. We could, we could probably turn the tables on turn the tables and come up with something new. Then we have the one, two, three, four, fifth row. Deadly brew, mind over poison and shiv. 
Deadly Brew is the best in option right now. I would love to see a Mind Diamond Poison buff to maybe have a percentage of health damage. That would be cool. Then there's Shiv. I honestly could see Shiv buffed. Or even be just be given to Assassination Rogues. I remember back in the day when Shiv would just take off and rage effects off of enemies and it would sink in your non-lethal poison, so it would be Crippling Venom. And Crippling Venom would... Is it Crippling Poison or Venom? It's Poison. Why well, I keep saying Venom? Crippling Venom would slow your target by 60 or 70%, almost put him into a complete root slow. That would be cool to come back to the game. Or even if you sh give Shiv as its Neurotoxin effect applies, to assassination as a baseline, that would be interesting for PvP, because you can basically stop people from spamming the same ability. Demon Hunter is just hitting you with the same spells over and over and over, you can stop him. Shadow Priest is just trying to heal himself up, you can stop that too. Shiv just has so many capabilities, but it's just currently not as good as Deadly Brew. So maybe make Deadly Brew baseline for PvP, or for literally every PvE moment as well, that would be interesting. Uh, and then you have more options. Or if Blizzard does what Blizzard does best, they'll simply just take the best one on Earth. So hopefully they won't do that. But I could, I would like to see a buff for my numbing and Shiv. In the last row, we have Creeping Venom, Flying Dagger, System Shock. I think I've said everything I could about Flying Daggers. I still could see a buff to this ability to be actual solid damage. But currently, Assassination, even right now, doesn't have a good playstyle for spreading damage with just straight up flying daggers. So maybe if flying daggers could spread damage in some crazy manner for PvP, that'd be awesome and fairly interesting. System Shock and Creeping Venom end up being the options where it's like, which one is the best? I don't really know how Blizzard can balance them so that one is just as good as the other, but a lot of people end up going with one is obviously the best. I like System Shock for its instant capability for nature damage, but with all the nerves that Assassination Rogue has gone through for PvP, it's just not as good. So now you have to go with Creeping Venom that ticks for literally pennies. So it's just it's in such a weird place. It just doesn't feel like one doesn't feel strong. One doesn't feel strong enough. One doesn't feel consistent enough. It's like there's no middle ground. And when you look at middle ground, there's flying daggers. I feel like it's just a row of just not full disappointments, but pretty close to it. But that's just my thoughts. Overall, I would have to say Assassination is a fairly well-built spec, it is pretty reliable, has great burst, great sustain, and now plenty of CC. I feel like it is good for PvE because you don't have to play with Roll the Bones and you have more consistency of your cooldowns. And in PvP, again, you have that consistency, so again, no Roll the Bones and none of that jazz. And you also bring in Wound Poison, which is great when you're training down healers or literally anybody in PvP. Now let's take a look at a subtlety. Subtlety is my second favorite spec and would be my all time favorite if it wasn't for Outlook being as fun as it, as it is. For the most part, I think I said everything in terms of talents and there's a lot of talents that are repeating and some talents I talked about already. Um, let's take a look at subtlety. I think Tango's Shadows could be buffed for PvP. It is buffed right now. So Nightblade now decreases the target's moment speed by additional 20%. But it's just like, look where it's at. You have the slow that cakes bakes into another ability for mobility. You have a buff for your stun when you lock people down. And then you have a slow. Which slow is really better? Of course, Strike of Shadows is. So this, I feel, like could be severely buffed. Make an enemy literally walk to a crawl. Hell, even take this out of a class talents, put it somewhere in the auto talents, and make it like 70 or even 80% movement speed reduction. That would be insane. That would be bananas. Because then Subtlety would have this, some crazy place to of root the world for like ever. Because you basically would put him in such a crawl. It's almost like a root. At level 90, yeah, I could, I could see a buff for Enveloping Shadows. It's an interesting ability, but it's just you have to invest 30 energy and combo points just to get combo points back. And it's like, on one hand, it sounds like a good investment. But Premeditation basically does all that instantly without having to invest combo points. And keep maintaining it, keeping it up. I could see a buff to Enveloping Shadows. Maybe if they took away the combo point requirement but kept the energy thing for it, so it basically would become a second passive buff, so it would have Symbols of Death and Envelop in Shadows. One gives you 20% more damage, one gives you combo points, and you maintain those and train down the boss, or use it for PvP. That would be fairly interesting in my opinion, but might be overpowered, completely possible. Then we have Honor Talents, we have Silhouette, and that's the one that the Blizzard did so well on. We have Cut to the Chase maneuverability and another Silhouette. With Silhouette, Shadow Step cooldown is reduced by 50% when cast on a friendly target. I could see this being used against survival Hunters, when survival Hunters are trying to trap your healer back to back to back. And Silhouette, you step, you would absorb the trap, 
and every time you can basically counter a hunter with silhouette. This also allows you for a little bit more mobility because you already have you, you already have shadow strike to get up to the enemy, to kick, to uh, shadow strike kidney the enemy, shadow strike whatever. And then silhouette can be used to back out, so you would burst the target and back out. And you would use any friendly's position in order to make your escape happen. So that's awesome. Now, fourth row, we have Shadow's Caress. This is the best row in the game, honestly. <laughs> I honestly believe this is the best row for all rogues. Shadow's Caress. While in stealth cooldown, recovery of a bit is increased by 30%. This also accounts for Shadow Dance. So it's like an ability that's so convenient for an already existing playstyle, which is yours just going in and out of stealth form, I guess, whether you're in stealth or in Shadow Dance. So this is just like so good for the cooldown recovery. Such a good talent. Honor Monk Thief still is a good talent because it generates common points which have infinite potential to what you want to use it for. Although Subtlety I don't think really needs it, but still just very solid. And then we have Smoke Bomb. Just how iconic an ability of Smoke Bomb is, it's just unbelievable. I've been using this ever since Pandari and I used it in, in Wad. And it's just, it's gone and it's like, what? Ah, oh, it's just so weird. What if they added this instead of, uh, instead of, uh, Turn the tables for Outlaw and, ass and Assassination. What if they added Smoke Bomb? Would that be too strong? That'd be so cool. Smoke Bomb. Oh, I don't know where. That'd be exciting. In the fifth row, we have two good for DPS increase, Dagger the Dark and Cold Blood. But then there's Veil of Midnight. That doesn't actually have a DPS increase component. It has a dodge chance of 100%, not dodging spells. If Veil of Midnight made you immune to CC in general of any sorts, and made you, or basically immune to any form of damage or CC, basically made you uh, dodge spells and attacks, uh, or immune them, or something of that sort. If it made you literally invulnerable when you open, it can't be CC, it can't really be bursted hard, then I think it would be kind of cool, because then it's like, hey, at least I get my opener no matter what. But then I'll be OP, because then there's also Shadow Dance. It's just such a weird placement. Maybe devs could do something about it. In the last row, we have Phantom Assassin and Thieves Bargain. With Thieves Bargain, I talked about it before. I thought it wouldn't work, but I kind of see the use for it, and I am okay with it. Phantom Assassin still probably the best option, but then we have Shadowy Duel. What is this ability? It's interesting, because it basically puts you in a duel, and if you ever see an arms warrior trying to duel people, unless they haven't fixed that still, hopefully Blizzard did fix it by now, Shadow Duel basically puts you in a duel with the other person, and you're surrounded by shadows, so only you can see each other. And both of you will be basically out of the corporeal world, which is a little bit weird to take a look at at first. But it costs 50 energy, 2 minute cooldown, only lasts for 6 seconds, allows access to cell based abilities. It's just. It's. Uh, it's just. I want it to be so good, but it's just so bad, no matter how many times I tried it. I guess it could work as CC to take somebody out of a situation for 6 seconds. So let's say you throw a healer into a blind, then into a kidney, and oh, first lose a kidney, then into a blind, then into a sap, then into another sap, then into another sap, and then you shadowy duel them, and then into a cheap shot, or maybe even a kidney, then I could see it work. But it's just currently, shadow duel is just not a good talent all on its own. Uh, just Phantom Assassin and Thieves Bargain end up being better ones. Maybe if they were to replace a shadowy duel with, what was it, Shadow Reflection. Oh, that was such a cool talent back in WAD. Shadow Reflection that would copy your abilities like 8 seconds later. That was a very interesting combination of abilities and I loved playing it back as a combat rogue. It was so awesome for duels. Just Shadow Reflection back to back, double kidney, internal bleeding. Oh, that was so much fun. But anyway, this is what I have. Oh, it was so much fun. But the rest of the spec I think is pretty good. And I think it's been just designed fairly well. It's not the same subtlety you remember. It's subtlety of Legion. So I feel like as its own spec, it's pretty good. One pet peeve is if they could make Shadow Dance a non-global cooldown ability, so you can use it in between abilities, that'd be awesome. Because there's so many moments where I'm opening in PvP, I'm going for a Shadow Strike to get to the enemy, Cheap Shot to lock him down, Night Blade, and then I'm thinking I'm hitting Shadow Dance, but there's still that global cooldown, as you will see, like the global cooldown timer. I end up hitting Shadow Blade, Shadow Dance, before the timer is over, right before. So then I kind of have to fumble, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm meant to hit Shadow Blade, Shadow Dance, and then Shadow Strike, and then Cheap Shot, and now my timing is all off, and the enemy gets to stun me and escape, and I just I just sit there and cry a little bit. I'd be cool if Shadow Dance became a non-global cooldown. So then it would still have some utility in terms of like how many players get to really fully utilize it to max potential. 
because there will be players that will be able to maximize the duration of Shadow Dance to have it for as long as possible, and there will be players that will be hitting it a little too early. So, I'm pretty sure that's why they have it so that Shadow Dance can be used in between of cooldowns. But it's on its own; it doesn't trigger a cooldown. It needs to be part of a global cooldown in order to be used, but it itself does not trigger a global cooldown all on its own. It'd be kind of cool if it was completely off of global cooldown just for PvP sake and even PvE. But that's just my own opinion. Otherwise, I think the spec has been fairly well constructed, fairly well made, and plays fairly well. It's uh, pretty good. Honestly, I don't have a lot to add in terms of rogues because there's a lot of changes coming out to our artifact weapons and how those will function. And that's basically why I'm not really going into full detail on everything because Blizzard is only making some changes to rogues already. By the way, I have that video on me covering the changes to our artifact weapon if you guys have not seen it in description down below, so definitely check it out. But this is it that been for me, guys. This is my wish list for the patch 7.2. I'm very excited to see what the patch will bring. And let me know in the comments, guys, what would you like to see out of patch 7.2? Do you like my wish list, or maybe you have one that you made by yourself? Feel free to voice it in the comments below, and if you want to, feel free to voice it on the forums. Because Blizzard is actually listening. If they took loaded dice, which is honestly a fan made trait, and they actually implemented it as an artifact trait, then they are definitely listening. So if you guys have any ideas, feel free to voice them in the comments below or in the forum anywhere you may find. Thanks so much for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see all of you in the next one.